This book is called Coco's Kitten. It was written by a scientist, Dr. Francine Patterson, and the photographs were taken by Ronald Cohn. This page has a picture of Coco the gorilla when she was one years old. And it's called a preface. In a preface, the writer tells you some things that you need to know. The first important thing the preface explains is that when Coco was only three months old, she got sick and needed somebody to care for her. The second thing we learn in the preface is Francine Patterson, when she was a graduate student, she also goes by the name Penny, had the idea to care for Coco. What she wanted to do was teach Coco American Sign Language because another scientist had been working with chimpanzees and found out that the chimpanzees could learn nearly 150 words in American Sign Language. The third thing the preface tells us is that even though Penny said she would work as much as five years with Coco, it turned into her life's work. When she wrote this story, she had already been working with Coco for 14 years. And the last thing we learn in the preface is that when Penny wrote this story about Coco and her kitten, she, Penny, and Coco could already use 500 words from American Sign Language to communicate with one another. Here is a picture, a photograph, of Coco signing the word for cat. Coco's full name is Hanabi Ko, which is Japanese for fireworks child. She was born on the 4th of July. Every year I have a party for Coco with cake, sparkling apple cider, and lots of presents. Coco knows what birthdays are. When asked what she does on her birthday, Coco answered, Eat, drink, get old. Three days before Coco's party, I said, I'm going shopping today. What do you want for your birthday? Cereal there, good there, drink, Coco signed. But what presents do you want, I asked. Cat, answered Coco. Later she repeated, cat, cat, cat. I wasn't surprised that Coco asked for a cat. I have been reading to Coco for many years, and two of her favorite stories have been Puss in Boots and The Three Little Kittens. Coco gets very involved in the stories I read her. When reading the story of the three little kittens who lost their mittens, Coco sees that their mother is angry and that the kittens are crying. Mad, Coco signs. Coco loves picture books. Gorilla books are her favorites. Cat books are next. She likes to go off on her own with a book to study the pictures and sign to herself. On her birthday, I gave Coco the usual assortments of presents, apple juice, some special fruits and nuts, and the baby doll. I didn't want to give Coco a stuffed toy because I knew she'd eventually destroy it. The only durable toy cat I could find was in a mail-order catalog, and I ordered it right away. It was made of cement and covered with vinyl and black velvet. I chose it because it looked real, and it was sturdy, gorilla-proof. The toy cat didn't arrive in time for Coco's birthday, so I decided to save it for Christmas. In December, I made a list for Coco. I drew about 20 pictures, fruits, vegetables, nuts, dolls, combs, and blankets. Every year, Coco gets a stocking and lots of presents. She loves Christmas. What do you want for Christmas? I asked as I showed Coco. Coco studied carefully the booklet. Then she pointed to a doll, nuts, and a cat. I bought Coco some nuts and a new doll. I wrapped the toy cat and put it with the rest of her presents. On Christmas morning, Coco ate her cereal and opened her stocking. It was filled with nuts. Coco threw the nuts aside and went to her next present. Coco unwrapped a doll. That stink, Coco signed. <laughs> then came the velvet cat. That red, she signed. Coco often uses the word red to express anger. Coco was very upset. She started running back and forth, 
banging on her walls. She was doing display charges past me. They were angry, angry charges. It is natural for gorillas to display when frightened or in great danger. They run sideways, pound their chests, then go down on all fours and run back and forth. But this was Christmas, usually a happy day for Coco, and she was with people she loved. Later in the day, Barbara, a friend who had known Coco since she was a baby gorilla, arrived. That looks like a black cat, Barbara said to Coco. Would you show it to me? Coco did not answer. She pulled a blanket over her head. Could I see it? Barbara asked. Coco pulled a rag over the toy cat, then tossed it in the air. Cat that, Coco signed. Please let me see it, said Barbara. Coco gave her a toy dinosaur instead. I finally understood Coco's strange behavior. She was unhappy with her Christmas present. I had made a mistake. Coco did not want a cement and velvet toy cat. Coco wanted a real cat. Coco wanted a pet. Things don't always happen quickly where we live. Every day is full of its own activities. So it was almost six months later when Karen, one of my assistants, arrived with three kittens. The kittens had been abandoned by their mother and raised by a dog, a Karen Terrier. Karen showed the kittens to Coco. Love that, Coco signed. As we showed Coco the kittens, she gave each one her blow test. When, kitten, when Coco meets a new animal or person, she blows in their face. I think she's trying to get a better scent. When she blows at a person, she expects them to blow back. Maybe she expected the kittens to blow back, too. The first kitten was smoky, gray, and white. Coco's blow test took him by surprise. The second kitten was a tailless gray tabby. He was also startled by the blow test. The third kitten, a brown tabby, did not react at all. After the blow test, Coco seemed to have made some judgments about the kittens. Which one do you want? we asked. That, signed Coco, pointing to the tailless tabby. I am not sure why Coco picked the gray tabby as her favorite. I never asked her. Perhaps it was because he didn't have a tail. A gorilla has no tail. That night, all three kittens went home with Karen. Two days later, the kittens came back for another visit. Coco was happy to see them. Visit, love, tiger, cat, Coco signed. First, she picked up the smoky gray and white one. Then Coco took the tailless tabby, and carried him on her thigh. After a while, she pushed him up onto the back of her neck. Baby, Coco signed. She cradled the tabby in her legs and examined its paws. Coco squeezed, and the tabby's claws came out. Cat, do, scratch, Coco signed. Coco, love. What will you name the kitty, I asked. All ball, Coco signed. Yes, I said, like a ball. He has no tail. Ball stayed overnight as a visiting kitten. By the end of the week, <laughs> Ball was a permanent member of our household. Coco had her kitten at last. For the first few weeks, Ball lived in my house. Every evening at six o'clock, I would take Ball to Coco's trailer for an evening visit. I carried the kitten in my pocket as I prepared Coco for bed. Coco soon grew accustomed to this routine. What happens at night? I asked. All ball, signed Coco. Right, I said. Ball visits you at night. When he was older, Ball snuck into Coco's trailer by himself. It worried me in the beginning. I did not know how Coco would treat the kitten unsupervised. As it turned out, Coco was always gentle. Ball was never afraid of her. Kittens should not be separated from their mothers until they are at least six weeks old. Poor Ball was abandoned by his mother at birth, which might have accounted for some of his faults. Ball was an, unusual, was an unusual cat. He was very aggressive. He would go up to people and bite them for no reason. 
He would bite Coco, too. Cat bite, obnoxious, Coco signed, but she never struck back. Coco did not like to be scratched or bitten, but she loved Ball in spite of his naughty behavior. Tell me a story about Ball, I said. Coco loved Ball, she signed. Coco treated Ball as if he were her baby. The very first time she picked him up, she tried to tuck him in her thigh. That's where mother gorillas put their infants. Older babies are carried on their mother's backs. Coco tried this with Ball, too. Coco was a good gorilla mother. She combed and petted Ball to keep him clean. She also examined his eyes, ears, and mouth to make sure he was healthy. It was Coco who discovered Ball's ear mites. Ball was often a topic of conversation during Coco's lessons. Love visit, Coco signed when Ball and I arrived for a morning lesson. Ball, I said. Trouble, signed Coco. Love. Coco seemed to enjoy conversations about her kitten. This dialogue took place between Coco and a research assistant named Janet. I'll give you some grapes if you tell me about Ball, the cat, Janet said. Soft, Coco signed. What kind of animal is he? Janet asked. Cat, 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 Coco signed. Do you love Ball? Soft, good cat, cat, Coco signed. In addition to sign language, art is another way that I test Coco's perceptions. Ball lay with a green toy on an orange towel. I gave Coco a canvas and some paints and asked her to draw a ball. Coco had ten colors to choose from. First, she picked black for Ball's body. Next, she picked orange for the towel and green for the toy. What about Ball's eyes? I asked. Coco picked tan. Coco loves to play games. Her favorites are Chase, Blow It, and Tickle. Coco likes to be tickled, and she thinks that others will like it too. Tickle, Coco signed to Ball when they were lying on the floor together. Ball was not a good tickler, nor did he like to be tickled. So Coco and I pretended. I tickled Coco while carrying the kitten in my hand. Coco thought this was very funny. Chase, blow it, enjoy, Coco signed to Ball. In blow it, Coco blows as hard as she can into the face of her playmate. It's not hard to understand why this game was not one of Ball's favorites. Chase is similar to tag. Players run back and forth and chase each other. This is a popular game among gorillas in the wild. But Ball never quite caught on to Chase. Coco did not realize that kittens don't necessarily enjoy gorilla games. Coco did understand that kittens like warmth, affection, and attention. And Coco supplied plenty. On a foggy December morning, one of the assistants told me that Ball had been hit by a car. He died instantly. I was shocked and unprepared. I didn't realize how attached I had grown to Ball, and I had no idea how the news would affect Coco. The kitten meant so much to her. He was Coco's baby. I went to Coco at once. I told her that Ball had been hit by a car. She would not see him again. Coco did not respond. I thought she didn't understand, so I left the trailer. Ten minutes later, I heard Coco cry. It was her distress call, a loud, long series of high-pitched hoots. I cried, too. Three days later, Coco and I had a conversation about Ball. Do you want to talk about your kitty? I asked. Cry, Coco signed. Can you tell me more about it? I asked. Blind, she signed. We don't see him any more, do we? What happened to your kitty? I asked. Sleep cat, Coco signed. A few weeks later, Coco saw a picture of a gray tabby who looked very much like Ball. 
She pointed to the picture and signed, Cry, Sad, Frown. It was an unhappy time. News of All Ball's death traveled quickly. We received thousands of letters. People of all ages wrote to us and expressed their sympathy. Some sent cards, others sent photographs, and many children created pictures. They all had one message, that Coco should have a new kitten. As we approached Christmas, I wanted to get Coco a new kitten. I had no idea how difficult that would turn out to be. On December 20th, Barbara asked Coco, What would you like for Christmas? Cat, cat, tiger, cat, was Coco's reply. We heard of a Manx who was soon expecting a litter. We waited weeks until we discovered that the cat was just getting fat. Christmas came and went. In January, I showed Coco a picture of three kittens. One had a long tail, one had a short tail, and one was tailless. When you get another kitty, what kind would you like? I asked. That, Coco signed, as she pointed to the tailless cat. We'll get you a kitty like that, I said. Is that okay? Good. Nice, Coco answered. How do you feel about kitties? I asked. Cat, gorilla, have visit, she signed. Coco, love. Coco was ready for a new kitten. If only I could find one. More time went by. I called the Humane Society. They had no kittens at all, let alone a rare, tailless Manx. I called many other places and was disappointed again and again. I was told that not many kittens were born during that time of year. The worst part of this period was my feeling that I was letting Coco down. I'd watch as someone would ask Coco, where's your cat? And she would look around almost as if she were doing a double take, as if she were looking for ball. Then our luck changed. We received a letter from a breeder of Manx cats who wanted to help. He didn't have any kittens then, but he called other Manx breeders nearby until he located a litter of Manx kittens in Southern California. They were just about ready to leave their mother. We set the date for March 17. The day before, I told Coco she was getting a new kitty, a red kitty. Red is Coco's favorite color. She was very excited. Then another delay. The breeder said, I'm sorry, he said. The kitten is not coming today. Coco was upset. I was disappointed. Trouble, she signed. We are having trouble getting you a new kitty. We have been trying very hard, I explained. Finally, on March 24th, a red, tiger-striped Manx was brought to our home. Seeing the kitten, Coco purred with pleasure. It was a wonderful moment. She placed him on her chest and petted him. Let me hold the kitty, I said. But Coco would not let go. She kissed and cradled her kitten. Baby, she signed. Coco was happy. Her new kitten had come to stay. And in the photograph, you can see Coco with her new kitten, whose name was Lipstick. An epilogue page tells you extra things that are fun and important to know. For example, on this page we find out that Ron is the photographer in this book, but he's also more or less Coco's father figure in what's called Project Coco. Um, we learn about the Gorilla Foundation, and we learn how important it is for people to support the work of scientists like Penny. On the right side of the page is a photograph of Coco with Mr. Fred Rogers. You might know Mr. Rogers, you might not, but he was from Pittsburgh and he went to visit Coco. And this YouTube clip from the Coco organization is a wonderful minute and a half or so of Mr. Rogers interacting with Coco. They became great friends, and I hope you get a chance to look up this video clip. And that has been the book, Coco's 
Kitten. It was written by Dr. Francine Patterson, whose nickname is Penny, and the photographs were by Dr. Ronald H. Cohn.